All right, well, let's start with how the project started. And maybe if you could talk a little bit about the uh, sensory ethnography uh, department or lab. Uh, lab, lab, yeah. Lab, yeah. Um, well, the, so my background is, I'm a filmmaker and an anthropologist, and I work, uh, I've been working in Nepal since 1999. And I started making films there in 2006. And um, be before we started the project, I'd been there, I was there for about two years um, and working in the same village day after day um, and working with some of the people that, a number of the people that you see in the film. And life had become pretty predictable. Mm. And I was feeling really stymied. And uh, the monocom and a cable car, everyone in Nepal knows about. So it just seemed like a really novel situation and a way to get out of the village. And it was just so spectacular and surreal and strange that it seemed like it screamed cinema. And so that had been, you know, something that I'd been thinking about for a while. But Pacho, on the other hand, had also been thinking about working on a film about transport. So, and then we met later and it was serendipitous, but you wanna talk oh, about? Um, sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I um, I was a graduate student mm -hmm. at Cal Arts, and I actually, I, I, one thing that's great about graduate school is you see all sorts of work that you can steal ideas from. Uh, one of those films was a was a film called Are We There Yet by um, uh, a Thai student uh, named Sompat Chagad Sabporn. I'm just gonna screw up his name. <laughs> Chagan Porn, we say. Um, and um, it was a film that, that featured a, a number of shots on trains in Thailand that were shot on a tripod of passengers looking out the window. Mm -hmm. And so these shots both were these, these kind of durational portraits of, the, of Thai people um, and also these sort of wonderful scrolling landscape shots. Um, and I had sort of, yeah, I was, I was struck by this, this way that the shot both functioned as portraiture and as landscape at Cal Arts. James Benning is a very influential teacher. Um, and this, this way of sort of co combining the two seemed, seemed like a, a novel thing to me. So for a, a while I'd been thinking about ways to take this idea, this a shot that was both uh, a landscape vista and a, and a portraiture mm -hmm. and to put it into the world. Um. And, I, and we, we met in 2006 in a classroom setting, but then we didn't see each other for how many years? I don't know. Four, Probably, five? Yeah, yeah, something like that. And um, in that time, um, Scott McDonald had also come to Harvard to teach um, avant-garde cinema and I was his teaching assistant for that class and saw 13 Lakes, 10 Skies, uh, Kenneth Anger too, and just like this whole amazing slew of films I'd never seen before. So for me, um, I, I thought 13 Lakes, I, I still believe, you know, 13 Lakes is one of my favorite films of all time. I'm, I'm not, I'm enthralled the whole time. And so this, I, this um, duration uh, has always been appealing to me. But in this con, but for us, what was wonderful about um, shooting in film, it was shot in 16 millimeter film, is that it gave a structural integrity to our mm -hmm. desire to convey the entire trip. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So we see parallels with that work, with um, Sharon Lockhart's work. Mm. Um, that's performative in different ways, like Pine Flat, for example. Yeah. yeah. So. But also, as we were as we were building this film we were very aware of structuralism and the rules of structuralism. But we didn't, we didn't want this film to sort of comfortably be a, a structuralist no. film. And there's, there's a way that that's right. I think part of what was so exciting about the innovations of, of people like James Benning and Sharon Lockhart were, were just the, the novelty of this way of, of building a film. Mm. Um, and the, the rules of structuralism have been around now 25, 30 years, even more. Um, and so it's time, I mean, it, we hope our film is a kind of ad, advance, a, a way of using some of the ideas of structuralism, drawing the, the durational shots, but not quite fulfilling the, the sort of the, the obligations mm -hmm. of the, the contract of structuralism. Um, 
Well, and, in a, and on top of that, there's a real sincere engagement with the people mm. who are in the car. Mm. Um, you know, the, a lot of the people that you see I've been working with are known for over 10, 11 years. And mm. so it's really important for us for that humanity to come through. So it's not just <coughs> portraits of, it, 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 that, that there'd be a kind of like, um, that it, their personalities emerge somehow naturally and that there's a comfort, but you don't need to know their whole stories. Mm. You know, we don't have to build a narrative about where they come from and so but that that so the ethnographic is there in the loosest like maybe in like a humanistic sense mm. of the ethnographic so not so much I mean mm. although we also think about ethnographic film and um, use the same camera that Robert Gardner had used oh. for Forced to Bliss okay so and we were um, we were acutely aware of that mm. uh, I mean that film was always on our minds and that history too mm. and also both coming out of Harvard and Robert Gardner established the Film Study Center which mm. had funded a lot and provided film stock for mm. um, so the film stock and the camera which Robert well not the film stock but I <laughs> the camera that um, Bob Gardner had used so that was definitely there too yeah. so it's a hodgepodge mm. of and one one sort of I think key word for us is is messy it's a film mm. that's a little bit structuralism, but not quite. It's a little bit ethnographic, but it's not quite. It should. It doesn't quite sit comfortably into these mm. places. Also, a little bit science fiction, but not yeah. quite science fiction. Um, one of our one of our running jokes is we actually shot the entire film on a soundstage in Burbank, <laughs> um, with rear projection, and it sort of looks like that. You yeah. know that that. Um, yeah. So this, there's a kind of productive messiness. Um, that that lets the film be or have 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 feet in all these different feet in all these different pies. <laughs> Why am I That's yeah. a weird metaphor. Makes no <laughs> I like it. Feet, <laughs> fingers in many different pies. <laughs> Let's put it that way. Um, yeah.